what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here so recently john carpenter came out and basically gave his stamp of approval for the upcoming slasher film halloween kills the sequel to the 2018 david gordon green uh danny mcbride collaboration that we got and we know it got pushed back from this year to 2021 october 15th a lot of us are disappointed about that myself included we think that there's a chance that we could get something this year still given what happens with mulan tenet antebellum quite a few people myself included i still am holding out hope that they reverse the decision and surprisingly they'll put it out this year um that's just say uh that's just us wishing at this point because i honestly don't think it'll happen but anything's possible these days in 2020 but recently he had this to say about halloween kills basically giving it very high praise when you're using this word because this word is like one of my favorite words <laughs> um john carpenter had this to say about halloween kills during a sit down at fantasia 2020 he said it's the quintessential slasher film it is so intense oh my god it even stuns me how incredible it is. David just did a great job. Can't wait to have you see it. Now, quintessential. Uh, you're when you're using that word, you I honestly you got to be careful when you're using that word. You're basically saying that this movie is damn near perfect. Um, it's up there. When I'm hearing that, I'm I'm going to be looking for a movie like The Shining or the original Halloween or the original Nightmare on Elm Street or The Thing or, you know, like Scream, the original Scream. Those movies that stood out amongst the crowd, they just are just so well done and they're so unique and they're, there's just a vibe that they give off. They hit almost every box that you would check for in a movie and they just are like the films that you will talk about for the rest of your life such as the shining many people still talk about the shining all these years later and that movie is 40 years old at this point and that's one of my favorite horror films and when i'm hearing you use a word like quintessential to describe halloween kills david gordon green better have brought his a game and this better be one of the most action-packed intense emotional rides of a halloween movie we have gotten ever this has to be the best movie not i'm not well, i'm not gonna say it has to be but i'm expecting this to be like one of the better sequels and right up there with halloween 2 from 1981 or like this should be the movie we put next to halloween 2 from 1981 if you're using that word you want to use that word when I get done looking at Halloween Kills, I should be able to sit down and definitively say I can put Halloween 1978, Halloween 2 1981, Halloween Kills right there, and then right after that Halloween 2018. Those should be like our four movies that we can pick out of this franchise and say, you know what? These are the movies you need to sit down and look at the most because these are the ones that actually matter. This is the these are the best entries. A lot of people the, when you're talking about this franchise, they always like to talk about Halloween from 1978 and then its sequel. Those are the two movies from this franchise that get praised the most. That's the, Those are the two main ones that will get the most attention from this franchise. And that a lot of people will just not have any issue saying that, okay, these, these movies here are great. They're almost flawless. They have stood the test of time. And you're using quintessential to describe Halloween Kills, a movie that's already been getting hyped up as being very emotional, very gory, very just different. And it sounds like it's going to be Michael Myers on steroids, honestly. I don't know how I feel about that, but given how they go about it, maybe they'll combine the original stalking. Because one thing that was lacking from the 2018 film was how we didn't really get like tonally it wasn't like the best follow-up to the 1978 movie uh there were certain things about the 1978 film that just like the vibes just weren't present in the 2018 movie so hopefully those vibes like the stalking and several other things that if you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about hopefully we'll have those vibes from halloween kills otherwise halloween 2018 again was probably one of the better sequels 
that we've gotten. Uh, it is amongst amongst the good entries in this franchise, but when you're using quintessential, after I'm done looking at Halloween Kills, I should be able to take it, sit it right next to Halloween 2, and then say, you know what? These are the top three films in this franchise. This is the holy trinity of Halloween films right here. You have Halloween, Halloween 2, 1981, and then Halloween Kills. Now, hopefully, Halloween Ends is just as good of a follow-up, and then we can all sit down and definitively say, this timeline is the best timeline to watch because it's the most consistent, it's the most heartfelt, it's the most uh, driven, the just the most overall put together timeline. And it honestly will be at the end of the day, in my honest opinion. Look at the other timelines and then look at this one. We have John Carpenter and his team that worked on the 1978 movie. And then we have a set of three movies where we pretty much have the same gist of that same creative mind mentality from Halloween 2018 all the way to Halloween ends. These other timelines, we're getting different, different creative crews. We're getting different scripts. We're getting different inputs different everything uh for the most part though this timeline is being consistent that's what i always like to say before even before the 2018 movie came out i liked to make a mention of that the biggest issue with this franchise was the consistency uh and how inconsistent it was with its creative mentality um uh, and just how and i understand you bring in different people for different you bring in different people for movies sometimes but when I don't because I'm not in the industry, of course. I don't know why it has to be so different like the way it was with these these films. I'm I honestly am positive it there's a way that it could have maintained some consistency with its creative team. Because every other movie, we have a different director, different writer, different person doing this, different person doing that. But with this timeline, we have a sense of we know what we want to do and we're going to go in here and we're going to give give this a home run and we're going to show you why our reimagining and why our addition to this well-recognized franchise is going to be one of the best and why we're going to outdo what came before it. And I like that mentality because that's, that's a clear mentality that these, these people have with this. They don't want to do anything that tarnishes the reputation uh for them being follow-ups to that original film 28 the 2018 movie was great for what it was tonally wasn't the best follow-up but overall a solid movie that is a worthy sequel to that 1978 original halloween kills and halloween ends could be just two other additions to this new timeline that could definitively and when you're using the word quintessential john carpenter going out there using the word quintessential because he's already seen it uh when you're saying that there's a pretty good chance high chance that this is going to be the definitive timeline that many people will talk about you're not going to talk about the thorn timeline as much as you do this one and when i say you won't talk about it the same way or as much as you do the thorn timeline what i'm saying is the creativity involved in this is going to be much more much more consistent than the other timelines it's just abundantly clear Go and look at these other projects in this franchise. You have different writers, different directors, different this, different that. But this timeline, we finally have that consistency that I have honestly thought was one of the biggest issues with this franchise. You're constantly bringing in new people that want to do these different things. Now we have a group of people who know what they want to do. They have an image of how long it would take to get there, and they're going to do it. And they've already started off on the right foot. And they're going to continue on that right foot. Hopefully, it sounds like with what John Carpenter says with Halloween Kills. This just makes me even more excited for Halloween Kills. I can't wait to see how it ends up. Now, if it's not as good as what that word is making it to be that he used, that's fine. It's still going to be, in my honest opinion, it's probably going to be a great horror film. Probably one of the greatest slasher films that we've seen of this decade, of course, since we're in the early 2020s. <laughs> uh but I can't wait. Let me know what you guys think about all of this down in the comments section below. Uh, I'll have a link to this Facebook group you can join if you want to talk about anything horror related. But of course, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. Turn on post notifications so that never miss a video. In the description, I have links to my social media accounts. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there. Just let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. With all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.